Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. This video is going to be all about pouring and finishing a concrete sidewalk. So as you can see, we got this piece of concrete sidewalk here. And this was an existing sidewalk already, but it developed a couple little hairline cracks over last winter. And the owners of this building, they didn't want to look at those cracks, so they're paying to, they, they paid to have it removed and for us to come back and reinstall it. Now I know there's no way of guaranteeing this piece won't crack again, but that's, that's really not up to me at all. We were just hired to come in and install the concrete. The, the site contractor, the one who did the excavation is really the general contractor. So they're the ones dealing with the, the owners of the building. But anyway, so we're here to pour this thing. If you guys don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. We specialize in all types of concrete flat work and that's what my videos are all about. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit the subscribe button now. And hit the little bell notification. I come out with two videos a week and you'll be notified of each time I come out with a new video. Also, if you like these videos, go ahead down there and smash the like button. It helps rank my videos better so more people can see them and more people can learn. That's what I'm all about is teaching you guys how to how to work with concrete, pour it, finish it. And uh, that, anyway, that's what I like doing. So as you can see, we're pouring this piece of sidewalk and this has quite a bit of slope to it. So we're pouring the concrete pretty dry, probably around a, between a four and a five inch slump. If you guys don't know what slump is, slump is the term we use for how dry or how wet the concrete is. And the lower the slump, like a one, two or three is really, really dry concrete. Uh, four, five, and six is usually, you know, concrete that's kind of workable, pretty manageable. And anything above a six, a seven, eight, or a nine inch slump is usually pretty wet. Definitely too wet for something like this. And you want to keep the concrete pretty dry because that, the water cement ratio in the concrete will, will either weaken the concrete or help keep it strong like it's supposed to be. So, most concrete, this is a 4,000 PSI concrete with fiber mesh in it. And it's designed to be 4,000 concrete if you pour it at about a four, five, or six inch slump. Anything wetter than that, you're more likely to develop cracks you wouldn't normally get. So as you can see, we got it poured out. We got you know our edges mag floated, and we're just starting to screed it down. We had a 10 foot screed there to start with. Now I'm using about an eight foot screed and we're getting it leveled. You can see it kind of pitches towards the right, this whole piece of sidewalk. And it also pitches towards the front here too. It pitches away from the building. So it's got a couple different slopes to it. There was a bunch of concrete we did here, a bunch of sidewalks, some steps right there. You see, we did those concrete stairs. Uh, Luke's going to finish magging, floating those edges. We like to mag float our edges. As you can see, it, it makes them nice and smooth. It pushes down the rocks, brings up the cream, and it also helps when we go to finish. As you'll see here shortly, make sure you stay tuned for the end of the video. We're going to show you how to finish this thing. We're going to be cutting in grooves. We're going to be doing edging. We're going to be mag floating. We're going to be broom finishing this concrete. Now we got about a five foot screed there. So it's pretty handy to have a bunch of different size screeds. Um, I'll, have, I'll have a link to these tools we're using down in the description guys. So if you guys want any of these things, you know, you can go through those links to get them. Some of them we get through Marshalltown's website. Some of them you can get right on Amazon, have them shipped, all shipped right to your home. So all those links will be down in the description if you want to use the same tools we do. We were real careful here not to get too much concrete in here. We didn't want to have to shovel any out. We wanted it right perfect, so we didn't want to make a mess. So now we're just finishing up pouring this thing. I'm putting the bull float to it. And whenever you're doing sidewalks or walkways or pool patios or driveways, you just want to make sure you bull float it really, really nice. Take your time. Make sure you get a nice smooth surface to work with. You don't want really big bull float lines. So when you start the finishing process, it just makes it that much easier. As you can see, I got my old bull float here, which this one, I, you gotta push down the handles and then lift up the handles. 
So we're going to start the finishing. What I'm doing right now is I'm measuring out where we're going to put our first groove. We're cutting two grooves in this thing, and these two grooves are supposed to help. Uh, they're supposed to help the concrete crack in the groove. So if it does crack, it'll you know it won't look like a crack. It'll still look like a groove. And we're just putting these grooves right where the right where the engineer they actually had this engineered. They they're putting them right where the engineer told us to put them. So you know they're they're handling all the responsibility of the concrete cracking and we're just doing what we're hired to do we're using the 10 foot screed as a guide to make this groove nice and straight so luke luke you know put the groover in on that one side now he's going over to the other side to put the groover in to make sure the straight edge is in the right spot and now he's starting to cut that groove in the concrete and I'm mag floating the edges, making sure the edges are all nice and smooth. So when we go to run the edger up against that board, it'll just make edging the slab nice and easy. As you can see, Luke can kind of use that straight edge to get out on as some leverage to reach across this thing too. We could use those if you see those little concrete skids right there in front, the things with the little black knee pads in them. I mean, we could use those to get on the concrete with too. We get on our knees and float out across the surface but we just decided that we could we could reach out far enough on this so we didn't have to use those so we're just going to reach out you can see i'm finishing off the groove on that other side i've got other videos on finishing and cutting in grooves and stuff like that too if you want to check them out i'll link them at the end of this video so you guys can check those out if you want to learn more about how to finish concrete but this is how generally how we finish sidewalks you know we cut grooves in that little tool there that yellow tool with the red handle sitting down there in front too is another way you can cut grooves in but with this thing, you know we decided with the fence we got a fence in behind us and then we got a fence around those stairs that it was just easier to do it by hand without having to worry about hitting the fence with that handle so and there was only two of them so we just decided to cut these in by hand, but that little tool works pretty good too. I've got some other videos with us using that tool if you want to check them out. I'll have one linked up at the end of the video. So once we get our grooves rough cut in, then we're going to go ahead and we'll get them straight edges and screeds out of the way. Now Luke's starting to, to cut in the edge in there. And he's making sure that groove, you know, the end of that groove next to the board where we just did the edger. This is nice and nice and clean and nice and straight. And then he's going to go around and finish putting the edge to it. That gives it a nice round edge. That's a that's a Marshalltown edger. It's a nice brass edger with about a 3/8 inch curve to it. That's our favorite one. And you can see he can use that thing right around those curved forms. Um, it's not so big that it, it digs in when you go around curved forms. So it works pretty good around curves and it works good on the straight stuff too. I'm matching the new slab we just poured to that, that older concrete there. I'm making sure that they both line up perfectly. We don't want any lip there. We don't want it lower. We don't want it higher. We want it matched perfectly. So I'm making sure... When people walk down that ramp or they wheel a wheelchair down that ramp, the transition is perfect and we don't get any complaints from the owners about that. So the concrete's just about ready to start, you know, getting on it and magging the whole thing out and putting the broom to it. It's probably about, I think it was around 70 degrees here today. It's kind of partly cloudy partly sunny we had to wait after we poured the concrete we only had to wait about 30 to 40 minutes here before we started finishing so we didn't have to wait too long we and when we finish our sidewalks when we finish all our exterior concrete we only mag float our concrete up here in Maine it's and it's because I'll tell you why it's because we go through a lot of freeze and thaw cycles and our concrete our exterior concrete has has an additive in it called air entrainment 
Now, if you don't know what air entrainment is, it's kind of like if you, let's say you took some Dawn dish detergent and you put just a little, a few drops into a gallon jug of water and you shook up that gallon jug of water. Now that's going to have a lot of foam and, you know, air bubble, uh, foam and bubbles to it, that, that gallon of water. Well, that's kind of like what air entrainment is to concrete. They, they put this liquid additive in it and it creates all these tiny microscopic air bubbles inside the concrete. And what those air bubbles do is they allow water to penetrate into the concrete and then when the water freezes, it gives the water room to expand inside the concrete without popping the surface and causing spalling. So up here in Maine, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of you guys ask, why don't we steel trowel our concrete before we broom it, after we, you know, get done mag floating it? Well, when you steel trowel the surface with air entrainment, you risk uh, maybe trapping some of that air from escaping during this finishing process you know while the concrete's still really green like this there's moisture that's escaping evaporating out through the surface as well as some of that air too so by only mag floating it we're not really sealing off the surface and we're not trapping that moisture or that air right under the surface which would cause a blister or a bubble and then eventually peel off so that's why we don't steel trowel our surfaces up here in Maine, our exterior surface, and when we do broom finishing, you know, when we do stamping and stuff like that, we just give it a really nice mag float, and then we drag the broom across it, and it and it does give it a really nice broom finish. It's not too rough. Some of you guys have said, "Well, that's going to be really rough." Well, it's it's not, um, and we want you know some pretty good texture up here because by about the 1st of December until sometime in March, you know, we got a lot of freezing rain, a lot of ice, a lot of snow, so, you know, we don't want our concrete sidewalks slippery. You can see there, Luke was getting all that surface all magged out, and I'm starting to finish in the brooming, kind of working around that fence. That fence was really in the way, but you gotta work around what you gotta work around. Now he's putting the finishing groove mark in the groove here you can see that groover that's a pretty old groover that's one of my favorites I've probably had that thing over 10 years um, you can see I got the handle taped I just don't want to give it up so sometimes you get to using a tool that's your favorite you know and it gives you really good results you just you just want to keep using it over and over again and that's one of those So we broom over the groove and then we leave the finish groove mark, nice smooth finish groove mark over that. And then we keep working our way down the slab one, one broom width at a time until we get to the next groove mark. And you can see I got a set over. Right now what I'm doing is I got a bucket, of, a five gallon bucket of water over there that you can't see and I'm cleaning that broom off every so often. A lot of times the paste will build up in the bristles of the broom and what what that does is it sometimes it leaves these little concrete balls as you're dragging the broom across or it just doesn't leave a nice tight broom finish if there's a bunch of paste in the bristles so we clean the broom quite often when we broom finish like this. I'm using just a two foot wide broom too here too. You could use a three footer, you could use a four footer, that doesn't matter. But we just grabbed the two footer on this one. I'm going back and cleaning that again. So once we get the the, the concrete sidewalked all broom, you can see at, uh, Luke's starting to put in the finish edge tool mark. So he's going to go around and give that edge a nice picture frame look with that with that edger and he's not going to wait too long to do it because the concrete's nice and moist right now and it leaves a nice smooth edger mark if you wait too long especially if you're in the sun then you're going to kind of struggle to put those edger those finished edger marks in so you want to stay right on it now we're going over that last groove right there luke's going to set that groover in there 
go right across as far as he can reach. Well, that's kind of how you finish a concrete sidewalk, guys. At least that's how we finish it. So we, we cut our grooves in, we cut our edges in, then we mag float the surface, and then we get the broom to it, like you can see me doing. I just finished that up, and then we put our finish tool marks on. And then the concrete is completely finished. We got some curves to go around on this one. We got some straight parts. So we're gonna finish those off nice and clean and neat. And then the general contractor is gonna come back here and he's gonna he's gonna cure the concrete. He's gonna spray a cure and seal on it in about four or five hours to help cure this concrete and keep it from drying out too fast which will also help keep it from cracking. So if you got any comments about how to finish concrete, especially sidewalks like this, you know, leave me a comment down below and I'll try try to help answer your questions with any way try to help you any way I can. If uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, like I said, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now and hit the little bell notification and you'll be updated and notified whenever I put out a new video.